Let's turn to the record in Luke chapter 19. Luke 19 and verses 41 through 44. And here the inspired account tells us that when Jesus got nearby, he viewed the city and wept over it, saying, if you, even you, had discerned on this day the things having to do with peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes, because the days will come upon you when your enemies will build around you a fortification of pointed stakes and will encircle you and besiege you from every side. They will dash you and your children with, uh, with, within you to the ground, and they will not leave a stone upon a stone in you, because you did not discern the time of your being inspected. What do we see from these verses? Do we see the compassion Jesus had for those who would be killed when Jerusalem was to be destroyed? Yes, he was envisioning the destruction that would occur in the year 70 CE. He was moved by the emotions of that, so much so that he cried loudly, not silently like he did when he was about to resurrect Lazarus, but audibly, loudly. Now, what do we learn from this? Well, for a start, we can see Jehovah's love for people as reflected in Jesus. Jesus was very distraught, thinking about what would happen to that city and its inhabitants. And then in verse 44, what was the other thing that Jesus was distressed about? That that was a time of judgment, we might say, or inspection. Yes, even though Jesus was thinking ahead to the future events, he realized that they were missing the opportunity at that time to do something things that they needed to do to prepare for the future. There's something else that we learn too. Not only do we learn from the compassion that Jesus displayed, which we should likewise display when we think about what's going to happen to this wicked world. Whoa, hold on there, Jeffrey Jackson. We need to show compassion to people in this wicked world who are about to be destroyed? Did Tony Morris not get that memo? Since they're Jehovah's enemies and Jehovah's our best friend, that means they're our enemies. How we look forward to these enemies of Jehovah, our enemies, vanishing like smoke. The apostates and the enemies of Jehovah would say, well, that's gruesome, that's despicable. You teach your people these things? No, God teaches his people these things. This is what he's foretelling. And frankly, for friends of Jehovah God, how reassuring that they're finally going to be gone. All these despicable enemies that have uh, just reproached Jehovah's name, destroyed, never ever to live again. Now, it's not that we rejoice in someone's death, but when it comes to God's enemies, finally, they're out of the way, especially these despicable apostates who at one point had dedicated their life to God and then they joined forces with Satan, the devil, the chief apostate of, of all time. So while we eagerly await Jehovah's bringing his enemies to the end, just to emphasize this, but the wicked will perish, the enemies of Jehovah will vanish like glorious pastures, particularly they will vanish like smoke. So this, I thought this would be a nice memory aid. To this verse stay in the mind. Here's what Jehovah's promising. Hey. <laughs> That's Jehovah's enemies. They're going to vanish like smoke. Tony Morris there, showing us what compassion looks like. I mean, <laughs> who do we listen to? Do we listen to Jeffrey Jackson, who's gone on this long lecture about the events of 
66 and 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem, the besieging of Jerusalem in 66 AD, and the destruction by the Romans in 70 AD or CE. <laughs> and he's reading the verse there from Luke 19, verses 41 to 44, and making a point of the tears of Christ, the fact that Jesus gave way to sobbing at the thought of all of the death that was about to happen. And Jeffrey Jackson is specifically telling his audience that they need to have similar compassion regarding those who will be slaughtered at Armageddon. But what did we just see in that infamous clip of Tony Morris with his match, his, his lit match that he's blowing out gleefully? Where's the compassion there? This is an organization that speaks out of both sides of its mouth. And isn't this exactly the sort of thing you can expect from a human man-made religion that's just making things up as they go along. They are bound to contradict themselves.